All right, NBL, welcome back to the biggest game of the year here, the Super Bowl. Detroit Lions coming back for their second Super Bowl in a row against the first-time Steelers with Lip. Uh, it's going to be a tight game. I think these are probably the two most favorite teams that were going to make the Super Bowl, and here they are in the Super Bowl. So uh, why don't we start off with getting quick picks before we start the game here. And uh, Sonny Weaver, why don't you tell us who you have here? I'm going to take uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers here, representing the AFC North. Uh, I think the Steelers' offense, Big Ben Roethlisberger, set the record for NBL touchdowns this year at 40. I think he's going to get some play here, but I think Le'Veon Bell. Look for Le'Veon Bell to be the player of the game as Pittsburgh Steelers try to establish the run and grind out a tight one. All right, Doughboy, who you have? I have the Detroit Lions, the number one offense, Matthew Stafford, MVP, Calvin Johnson. They're going to win their second Super Bowl of this Madden. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. I think it's going to be the Lions in this game. And I think what really what they're going to do is I think they're going to have to go through Ebron, you know. The big playmakers on the outside with Calvin and, and Tate, uh, you know, that's what's expected. Uh, they got the running game going with Abdullah. I think if they can get Ebron going, it'll really open up the outsides for, for their big star wide receivers. So why don't they bring it to the field here as the Steelers about to take their first snap of the game. And we got Ben sitting in eye formation. Hands it off the bell up the middle. He's already got a big hole first run 10 yards. That's a nice run to start the game off. Yeah, Neil, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about to start the game. I think Le'Veon Bell is going to be the key here. They're going to lean on him heavily. Expect him to run right at Ezekiel Ansa. Uh, make Ansa decide to go inside or outside. And I think he's going to key off of Ansa uh, and, and look to make some plays in the running game early on. Yeah, uh, Bell's been a force for a couple years here in NBL now. He's he's uh, been towards the top of the league in rushing. I don't know that he's ever he's ever led it, but he's been towards the top, so he's definitely got the experience. And Ben to take a second snap here. We got two wide receivers out to the left, two tight ends. It's gonna be another handoff to Bell. He's able to get right past the defender and pick up a nine yard carry for a second uh, carry of the game. And he's really just pounding it such game. Yeah, I think he's going right at him too. They're playing run defense. They're stacking the box, and they are just going straight up the middle. They're going to have to get an answer to that run game right now with Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, the one thing the Lions have struggled with a little bit has been the defensive play. Their offense has been on point pretty much all year long. Um, so they definitely going to want to stop in a couple defensive stops here to give themselves a better chance here. So looks like another handoff to Bell. He's got another huge hole. They are just. Uh, just running it right through the throat of this Lions defense in this first drive. So notice what the Steelers are doing here. Uh, they're coming out in three wide sets. They're coming off in offset uh, stacks, twins off to one side, and they're running up the middle. They're making the Lions think they're coming out in passing formations, and they're coming out and running it on them. I think this is important because what this is going to do is it's going to set up the play action here with Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, look for maybe a deep shot to Martavius Bryan here off of play action. Yeah, you know, it's about time that the Lions are going to start pressing up. So maybe, as you said, he, he won't take a shot here. Anyway, wait, ben does take the snap. He throws it short. That almost could have been picked off, and that would have been for six. That was not a smart throw for Ben to make for his first throw of the game. I would have absolutely thought a play action was coming. You start the game with three runs. Perfect opportunity for a deep shot right there. I think that was a huge misplay. Yeah, you know... It, it's still second down here. I think the I think the Steelers can go back to the run here. I don't want to see them get too pass happy here just because they had an incompletion on first down. Um, they're gashing them for seven plus yards of carry. Uh, they need to get back and to go another run here. Yeah, one thing the Steelers don't want to do is is commit turnovers anyway. Uh, as we said, the Lions it hasn't been that great, so you don't want to gift them uh, you know free turnovers in this game. And send him uh, Antonio into motion. Calls hike. Looking downfield, but it's going to be a huge sack there by Hayes. That was a beautiful play on, on second down for the Detroit Lions defense. It looked like uh, Ben was looking there to the middle to either Heath Miller or Brown. Uh, it was covered well by Tullock in the middle. Um, like I said, I would have liked to have seen him run the ball there. It puts him in a long third and 17, and this is where the Lions capitalize. They get a lot of turnovers on long third and down. Um, you know, if I'm the Steelers here, I'd probably do something safe. Maybe try to get 10 back and, and pin him with the punt. And I remember the Jackson so let's see what the Steelers call. I think they're going to go four wide here with Antonio him. Brown Come sitting the in the slot. Bell in the backfield. Uh, let's see what, this, what they do. Uh, in the and there's the snap. Ben's looking downfield, dropping back in the pocket. Throws it over the middle of the field. And he's going to get Martavis Bryant, who gets the first. That was a lapse in the Lions defense big time right there. Absolutely. The Lions were thinking they were going to go corner out. And they had a beautiful middle field uh, in route for Bryant, picking up that big clutch first down, 18 yards. 
They, they literally had no one in the middle of the field. I mean, that was just a, a pitch and catch there for Ben and Brian. So here we go. Single back, two wide set for Ben here on first and ten on the Detroit Lions 32-yard line. And he's going to take the snap in the pocket. Throws it to Antonio Brown, breaks the tackle, then gets caught up. But it's going to be a nice 16-yard pass on first down. Yeah, with about three minutes left in this first quarter, uh, the, the Steelers really moved down the field. It looks like they, they're getting a good mix of uh, run pass here. They're, they're now passing on first down. Um, trying to get the Lions a little bit out of it, but I'd like to see them get back to the run here. Um, this is where a lot of turnovers happen down here in the red zone. Yeah, when you get a tighter field, tighter reads, uh, you really got to have a quarterback who's got a strong arm and able to know how to look off defenders. So let's see if Ben can get it done as he's been doing all year. And there we go, right there. Aaron throw, interception, and he might be to the house, folks. He could. I think he is going to take that to the house. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what we were just talking about. Right there, they got greedy. They should have went back to the run. Um, they were gashing them seven-plus yards to carry, and, and they come out and start throwing it. That is not a winning formula against this Lions defense. It's very opportunistic. They don't stop a lot of people, but they force a lot of turnovers. Absolutely. That would be, we have Detroit up seven. Two minutes and 21 seconds left in the first quarter. And Brothers, we're going to give the ball right back. Let's see if he can shake it off and the drive down the field. He's going to need a score right here. Yeah, one thing I want to see from the from the Steelers to start this, uh, you know, as Sonny was saying with the run, actually, I want to see them go play action first play. I want them, I want Ben to get his confidence back. He's, you know, an elite, you know, could have been MVP candidate quarterback right here. I want to see him show why he deserves to win that MVP to start this first that's, that, that's going to be a big return negated there um, on, on a block in the back, and that's going to bring Big Ben out um, on the 16-yard line. As Tom was saying, play action here. I, I think that's a little predictable at this point. I don't think you want to get desperate. There's a lot of game left to play. Um, I really want to see him maybe come out in three wide set, run it with Bell. Um, he was getting a lot of work in the three wide sets, and I think the three wide sets are, are what you're going to see is get that lighter personnel for the Lions defense out there on the field. The Lions with two extra defensive backs. But Ben does come out in a three wide set, Bell off to his left hand side. You got Brian out to the right. They audible the play. Moves Coates out to the slot to the left with Brown uh, off the left hand side now. Um, ben is going to drop back and looks to be looking to the center of the field. And he's going to get Coates. And Coates is going to get a big gain on first down up to roughly the 37 yard line. Yeah, wide open right there. That's something that I don't want to see from the Lions defense. I think. Uh, you know, through the year, it's been a pretty predictable pattern for actually a lot of teams. Uh, you know, get close, man up on first downs, and it really, as I said, leaves open for those play action passes with these speedier wide receivers to just get in the middle of the field and have really no one on them. Yeah, and that was Sammy Coach right there, who's actually stepping up to be the second on the team in receiving, guys. He's had a great season. 46 catches for 986 yards. Most people think of Brown and Bryant, but Sammy Coates is definitely a weapon on this team. So we're seeing a lot of cover three out of this Lions defense, especially on first and second down. I'd like to see maybe a pass out to the, the, the flats, a screen pass, something just to make this defense cover those flats because the Lions defense is not respecting the flats early on in this game. And, you know, I really think that's something they got to attribute to some some uh, deep film, film study of the Pittsburgh Steelers here. They know Ben and has big wide receivers, fast down. wide receivers that want to get down the field, and they're going to make him throw the ball short rather than throw it the coverage where they're going to take that all game long. Looking across the middle, that picks up seven. Yeah, I think, I think that was a misread there. It looks like... Uh, Steelers had someone streaking wide open uh, deep down the field. That would have time he would have wanted to take a shot. It was. You got the Lions showing the blitz a lot early on here, stacking the box, trying to make the Steelers beat them with the throw, and that time they actually got away with one. But Ben, I think, is a little gun shy after that first interception. He's taking the check down over the big play downfield. Yeah, they're actually they're actually bringing up one of the safeties. A lot of times running one safety high. I like to see Vance McDonald. He's had a, a very a very mediocre year, but uh, he could have a big play. And there we go with, with Coach breaking some tackles going down to the 11-yard uh, line. Oh, he, yep, that, that's a beautiful play by Ben right there. Able to read that it's man, get out to the hot route on the side quick, and then let your wide receiver just run with it. Let's see what the Steelers do here. wonder if they'll get gun-shy uh, uh, to throwing down here, if they're going to they're try to power the ball in down here. 
I yeah. think they need to get out of the shotgun for the for the for the red zone. That was a mistake last time. Yeah, if I were the Lions defense, I'd be pressing up on the line and uh and, and, you know dare them to run the ball because uh or dare them to pass the ball because uh, they picked it off last time. Beautiful play by them. Last play before the quarter ends. William Hayes chases him down. Huge sack right there. Huge second, sack. Second sack of the game for Hayes. He's having a wonderful. Everyone's double teaming uh, Ezekiel, and Hayes is going this to town right now on Ben Roethlisberger. And notice too, another cover three by the Detroit Lions. They really want Ben to throw those checkdowns in. Let's we'll see if he adjusts as the game goes on and, and decides to go ahead and check it down here. Looks like Ben might be audible in something with the line here. He's going to go ha hand it off to Le'Veon Bell. It's a big run up the middle. It's a nice carry on a on a second along to really get them into a manageable third down situation. Oh, yeah, another like that call on first down. Another cover three by the Lions. I'm a little surprised here. I figured we'd see a little more man at this point, but they're showing a lot of cover three stacking the box. Um, you know, you gotta assume here that that you're getting another uh, uh, zone by some sorts as it got stacked out to the right. See where Ben goes, right over the middle. To Down to the two yard line. Yeah, that was a nice play. Yeah, I don't think they're going to run as much man because of the, the fear of the speed of the wide receiver. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to I'm going to stick with the Detroit Lions running zone for, for this game. I think they're going to hold steady on that. It's going to be a heavy zone. Down here in the, in the red zone, I'd like to see a little man press maybe. I think you get some help over top with the safeties and, and it kind of negates that speed because they've only got so far they can run. So we have Ben taking the snap on the line. It's gonna oh good run. Oh, Bell's able to break through a couple tackles and bring that in. Back to Sonny's point. Uh, you know, definitely some man plays close would be nice. But at the same time, I think the Lions are uh, are feel a little inferior as, as their defenders compared to the Steelers wide receivers. So they might want to try to sit guys back in the zone, possibly cover cover two guys with the same zone if they're if you know sitting in the zone a little bit. So uh, the play calling seems to work out for the most part. Uh, the run's really what it ended up. Getting the Steelers the uh, the points at the end of that drive. You know what's interesting? We're, we're here five minutes into the second or five minutes left in the second quarter of uh, the first half, and we're just now getting to see the MVP uh, winner of the league this year, Matthew Stafford. Um, you know, it's been defense the whole way so far for Detroit, but you got to remember this is a high-powered Detroit Lions offense. Absolutely, we're tied. Uh, seven minutes into the game, and, and Stafford was first coming out today. I wonder what it's going to do for his psyche not seeing the field in the first quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Stafford take some shots downfield right away. First play from the pistol, Stafford takes the snap, throws it. That's a risky throw on the first play, almost uh, picked off by the by the Steelers middle linebacker there. Yeah, that was yeah. right. She's here right there. 34 tackles, two sacks, one forced fumble four interceptions on the season. He's having a phenomenal year. Second I would not down, throw to his area too often. The Steelers defense. Now. So we're going to see Stafford now come to the line, second down. Now he's got him spread out, four wide. wide. Ebron in the slot over field. there. Let's see where he's looking for. It's Looks like a play fake up the middle. Hmm. Risky throw, but he was able to get it in there. I think that was uh, Zach Corey Fuller. That's Fuller right there, folks. He's He's been a huge, uh, huge playmaker coming out of the slot for the Lions this year. Good coverage there by the slot corner. Just barely got beat there. Good ball placement by Stafford to get it out in front where only his receiver could reach it. And I think that's really what, what makes Stafford the you know MVP this year. He's able to make those kind of plays on a regular. After the long game, let's see what they do and we'll see Stafford coming again. Two wide set, two tight ends to the right side. Looks like he might be all doing something on the play. Another pass, drop back from the pocket. Throws it short over to Ebron. Nice pick up about four yards on first down. It is not as easy as it looks. It's interesting watching this Pittsburgh Steelers defense mixing it up a lot, um, seeing some man, some different zone blitzes. You know, I I come from a very high risk defense where you you press uh, Calvin Johnson, try to get him deep, and make Stafford make a mistake. I wonder if they'll look here soon to to take a shot deep. Oh, Abdul took a shot there from from the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive lineman. And actually, I was wondering right there. It's going to ask if. If if the Steelers, I mean, sorry, if the if the Lions are going to go ahead and get that running game going, you know, Abdullah has had a lackluster f first few years in the, the league, but he's really picked it up and seemed to found the holes a little bit better this year. So let's see if something they try to stick with as the game goes on. There we are, folks. Oh. The, the, the corners for the Steelers again coming up big. 
beautiful play, and that's because he got to the house for there. He was playing off, and he read that all the way and jumped that route. I think that was a little delayed reaction by Stafford, though. He, I, I think as soon as the cut was made, he definitely had him, but Stafford held the ball just one or two seconds too long, and Teller was able to make that play. So a game we thought was going to be dominated by the offenses up to this point in the game with 344 in the half has been dominated by the defenses. Yeah, yeah. That's, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you could see that that traces back to the to the draft last season where the Steelers did a lot of moves to get corners. They spent the past two off-seasons rebuilding their secondary. They actually have three corners under two years of experience, two rookies and one one-year pro. But they're all phenomenal players, and you're, they're going to have to be a threat to deal with. Yeah, this is something the Steelers really want to work on, and I think uh, Sonny knows firsthand how tough it is to deal with those wide receivers out there. Big drop there by Tate. That, that was a big drop by Tate. He had him. Uh, I think Stafford didn't quite lead him as much as he was anticipating initially, and uh, Tate couldn't hang on to that catching traffic. I think we're going to see the, uh, Abdullah get some carries, slow down a little bit, and regroup right here from the Detroit Lions. Yeah, let's see what we have. We have three wide set. Calvin's motion inside. And that was almost picked right there. Ooh. You know, the Lions aren't Stafford. taking what's being given right now. The, the Steelers keep coming out in quarter defense. Only three down linemen. Real light personnel, and the Lions aren't checking to the run. They're still pushing it downfield. Not even the check into the run, but the, they are leaving the short passes open. Make the, the, the Steelers get up in the box and stop these passes. And he had Ebron on the corner route. Beautiful conversion on third down. I think that's really what the Lions needed to, to possibly kickstart this offense a little bit. Stafford's finding some success towards the outside of the numbers. Um, you know, he's not seeing much success inside the numbers. Expect a lot of throws to the outside here. Um, they come out in this bunch formation. I think they may be looking once again to the outside. Oh. And again, I think that was a bad throw deep down the field. The corner was right with him the whole time, and the safety on that play. I think uh, one thing that's that's hurting Stafford with this this uh, this game so far is he's he's getting he's trying to make his reads pre-snap and stick with what he sees, and not making the post-snap reads, not following where his receivers are going based on the defenders. And I think that's something that's really hurting him so far. See what we have second and ten here. We have four wide set. Stafford so takes the snap. Gonna get hit as he throws, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Where's Amir Abdallah at this point? That's what I want to know about this game plan. You've given him one carry so far in this game. Here we are. Stafford had ten or nine passes to one rush. You've got to get a running game, or else this all or this defense is just gonna tee off on you. Let's see what Stafford has dialed up here. We have four wide set. Calvin in the slot. See where he goes. He, looks like he has Calvin wide open at the middle too. No one even covering him is going to take that untouched to the house. But back to what Sonny was saying with Abdul, you know, it's not a bad game plan. Focusing on the pass so much early, try to get the Steelers, you know, back. But you got to be successful with it. And they're not successful with it, then the Steelers can just sit there and anything that lines with them is not, not working. But Stafford was able to connect on a huge pass there, and that's uh, definitely going to be something that's going to get that offense going. If you're the Steelers here, you need to run the ball. Don't give the Lions back the ball. You've got two minutes, 53 seconds. Do a nice controlled drive. Get a score before halftime and come out ready to roll again. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with you there because not only do they not want to get the ball over, but if they do get the ball over and they don't chew most of the clock out, if the Lions happen to score before the half with their high-powered offense, they're going to get the ball to start the second half, and they could quickly make it a two-score lead. And, uh, you know, in a Super Bowl game, that's tough to come back from. So let's see what Ben and the Steelers have dialed up here. He's coming out in I form of three wide. And I think, we got I a think flag that might be back. for a holding, even though he, he had coats open with a big pass. It looked pass. defensive to no. me, guys. There it is. <laughs> big, defensive. big play right there. That was a play action, right, coming out of, out of first down. Yes, I know it wasn't a play action, but it was it was a it was a great play call by the Steelers there for sure. Wanted to come out shooting. I think the Lions were, were expecting a run and, and to kill some clock. But now we're down to the 36-yard line, and we got Ben again in a single back here, two wide out to the one to the left, one to the right, double double tight end set here. 
Looks like he might be uh, audible in the play here, saying something with the defense. Now this is more like the game that we all expected when we got here with the number one, number three ranked offenses scoring and scoring quickly on big plays. Yep, and there's a handoff right up the middle to Bell. Not going to go anywhere for him. See if the Steelers would like to go ahead and call one more play or if they're just going to let this go ahead and take out to the two-minute warning. Over again on second down. And still has come to a line, but I don't think they're going to get this off in time. Two-minute warning. So something that I really want to see from this under this final two minutes from the Steelers is, first of all, I'm most importantly, do not turn the ball over. But if, I want them to kill the clock, as we said. That you know, if, if they score, if they don't, if they don't convert on third down, if they don't convert on the second down, and give the ball back to the Lions, take the field goal, you're going to give that that offense plenty of time to go downfield, and that's not something that you really want to have happen. Yeah, especially with, with Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson. We know this this, this duo can score with any time left in the game. So let's see what the Steelers have dialed up here as Ben comes to the line. The shotgun, he's got two wide receivers set off to the left side, takes the snap. He had someone open up the middle, but it was a beautiful throw there to Brian as well, down to the nine. That was a nice play by, by Ben Roethlisberger and Martavis Bryant. They're inside the 10 here. There, there's always that thought of what happened last time. Well, I guess two trips ago. Big runs here by Le'Veon Bell. Let them pound it in. That's what you pay them all the money to do. We'll see. Let's see if they go ahead and follow your words here. Ben looks like he's audible in something. We'll see someone with defense, and he does take the snap. Throws it to to Brian over there, and he is able to get into the end zone for the touchdown. That was a tight throw by Ben, but able to just squeeze it in there. Nice pass. But they have too much time on the clock. Absolutely. Minute 30 left, plenty of time, all three timeouts. I think I think we're going to see Bomber go down the field right here. Yeah, and uh, as we stated for 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 you know for the uh, Steelers, I got to say the same thing about Bomber here. You know, if he's going to be taking these shots, he better be confident in it. But if he throws a pick and gets and gets the, uh, the Steelers to score another, another touchdown here or even a field goal, you went from possibly being able to go into the half tied or possibly going up by a score to now being down by two scores going to the half. Well, Bomber, like you said, you know, this is an interesting position. Do you push it or not if you're Bomber? I think you, you do a controlled kind of march down the field. If you don't get up a decent amount of yards in the first uh, play or two here, you slow it down. Try to get the, the, the clock moving. You don't want to give it back here for sure. Yeah, with Stafford being the MVP, uh, he needs to know in this in this spots where he needs to either throw it away or take the sack if he doesn't have anything open. And so it's going to be a screen to Abdul on the first play. Going to pick up a solid five yards on there. Good call there. Uh, didn't work out, but I, I like the call. It gets the clock moving a little bit. Gives you opportunity for a big play. Didn't happen, but, but smart play call there. That pass play picked up only with the direction the game's going, guys. Do you think this is going to be the last team to score is going to win this game? Let's see. We have Stafford here. He's got a three wide set. Ebron on the line. Takes the snap. Stafford in trouble. Escapes oh, pressure. See if he's able to get around to the outside. Oh, no way. Oh, what was that? That, that, is a, that is a rookie mistake right there by Stafford. I can't believe he just did that. And, and that's he takes what we just talked house. about. Make a big mistake here, go down two scores, and, and now you've got you've got a Lions team that's going to have to start pressing down the field. Hopefully they don't get too antsy here. 40 seconds left. Come out, run the ball, the go ball. into halftime and regroup. Absolutely. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I can't, I don't even have words to describe what that was. Stafford's supposed to be an MVP quarterback for three years in a row now, and he's just running backwards, making the throw across his body in the biggest game of the year, right to a Steelers defender. That was just a stupid play. Like I was saying earlier, I think he feels that it's the last team to score, and he is trying to keep up no matter what, and just made a horrible play right there, guys. And he's going to turn the ball off to about the 22 yard line, so it will be interesting to see what the uh, what the Lions do here. I definitely think they're going to go ahead and nail it or run it out. I don't think they're going to take another shot here, even though they did, they do theoretically have the time with the timeouts as well to get downfield. I'm curious if they will go. Let it go and go out there, be aggressive. So Stafford's going to come out three wide, set Ebron on the line. Steelers look like they're bringing a safety into the box. And he has someone open. That was Calvin again. See if they go ahead and burn a timeout here. That was a nice, nice safe throw. You know, give it to your best guy, Calvin. He's carried this team the whole time. 
So go ahead and, and pitch to him on the first play and let him pick up some yards. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Bomber's gonna come out and pass. He he wants to score here. He is very upset. Stafford wants Corners to redeem himself. And you know, uh Despite how lopsided the score looks right now, if he is able to even kick a field goal and then go back and, and uh, big oh, oh big wow, the Steelers get the oh, ball back. Twenty-four oh, seconds. They're on the wow. their twenty-eight yard line or the Lions' twenty-eight yard line. Excuse me, and they can score again, guys. How deadly would this be if they get a touchdown? This could be a collapse of that proportions here by the Detroit Lions, giving up possibly 14, maybe even 21 unanswered here right before half. You know, if if I'm the, the Steelers, I take a shot here, but I keep in mind I'm in field goal range. Don't give it away. There's going to be a pick up there to Bell. He's able to pick up 10, 15 yards. Nice carry there on first down. And he gets out of bounds, stops the clock, he's able to give, give that offense a little bit more time to make a play and get in the end zone here. Yeah, if the Steelers score right here, we're going to see a lot of Le'Veon Bell in the second half, guys. They're definitely going to be looking to, to run that clock down. Inside the opponent's 20. I take it all back to the Lions' inability to want to run Amir Abdallah. That's going to come back to haunt them, I think, after this game. Yeah, let's see. So we have a handoff here to Bell up the middle, able to get in the backfield and, and stop him for a very short game. Though. But, yeah, like you said with, with Abdullah, uh, you know that Steelers defense. You know it's it's not not top ranked defense, but it's by no means a pushover. But they're really able to sit back and just and you know only bring three, bring four. They don't need to blitz. They can just sit back, let the passes come to them, and uh, and, and make some plays on it because they don't have to fear the fear the run at all. So let's see what Ben calls here. He's got 14 seconds left. Looks like it's all going something on the line of scrimmage. Let's see what he goes to. Second and eight on the 13. Watch out for Antonio Brown right here. He wants to get a score. And I think, you know, Brown might have a little right there. there, too. Oh, he just couldn't big, hold big. on to Oh, wow. Wow. You know, if I'm the Steelers here, though, I'm, I'm still I'm taking the shot. You know, I'm, I'm not running the conservative play and just pounding up the middle and, uh, you know, calling the timeout and kicking the field goal. I'm throwing this ball into the end zone right here. One of the yeah, Steelers are noticing uh, every time this line's defense is, is stacked in the box, uh, they're in a cover three. If they if they run a little seam route, if, if Ben looks out and gives a little motion to one of his slot guys to seam it, he's going to be wide open running right up the middle of the field. Watch out for the tight end, too, right here. So he there it is to the Vance McDonald, and first catch is a TD. Oh, nice play, nice play, nice catch. This could be a blowout. How excited right now with the Steelers with, with that swing in the second half, going up 21 points. You know... It looks lopsided, and it looks like this game is in the Steelers' favor. But, you know, you'd be a fool to count the Lions at this point. Uh, I would not put a pass bomber and it's Matt Stafford to, to get it together and really start driving. You know, this is a big lead, but if the Steelers decide they want to sit on this ball in the second half and really work on killing the clock, they, they run the chance of possibly getting out of rhythm. And, you know, if the Lions do go ahead and make a comeback in this game, the Steelers might just be out of rhythm and not able to kick it back in gear. So it's definitely not over yet. Stafford's not taking a shot here. He could just crush his confidence. Good to see Abdullah finally get a handoff. It just may be a little late. Looks like it's actually coming back, coming back anyway. And they're going to go into half of the penalty. But they do get the ball back in the second half. So, so Bomber's going to come out, make some adjustments. I think we're going to see him go down the field right here. Yeah, you know, and as much as I was saying this game, is not over and with this team they still have a chance to come back I do have to say if they do not score on this drive unless it is the quickest drive we've seen in a long time I think this game is almost over because they're, they don't score here they're really going to start running low on time on a three score game hey Tom yes how do you eat an elephant I don't know one bite at a time. That's what the Lions need to do. They're not going to get it all back right here. They need to work some underneath stuff. If they push it downfield, they're going to turn the ball over again. They need to take uh, it one step at a time here. No, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. However, they need to score one way or the other. But just like that, they need to do, get Abdullah going in this game, make the Steelers come and press the line more than what they have been, rather than coming out in these quarters and, and dimes all game long. A duel a little late getting involved in this they game, only third carry of the game, one right there is the half closed out. I don't know if it's too late to get him involved, but I think you have to just to make him respect it. Um, if they can tee off on the passing game, this could get ugly. 
Let's still see what Stafford go ahead. He's gonna hand it off to Abdullah again. He has another hole up the middle, able to get for a big carry. This is what we wanted to see out of Abdullah the whole game to make the uh, you know make the Steelers come and press the line more. They're still, as we've seen now, they're coming out in another you know dollar formation or or dime formation. They're just not they're not respecting Abdullah at all. Absolutely, there was definitely some coaches that had to get in somebody's ear in the in the locker room for the half. They have to get a run game and play action going in order to come back into this game. Let's see if uh, Stafford continues the, the pressure with Abdullah here. Look, he's all going to the line of scrimmage, takes the snap. Oh, I don't even know what that was. And again, Ryan Shazier throwing it to his area was a mistake with the big turnover. This is a might beautiful be play call, call, really, because the defense showed the blitz, and, and Shazier dropped into coverage, and he dropped right into where uh, Matthew Stafford made the free play read. He was throwing that ball when they came out. He, he had already made his decision before the ball ever snapped. And right there is one example of why you got to actually see it happen versus think it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, I think so they, they, they line up in the shotgun. Do you think we're going to see runs or plays, guys? Uh, well, we're going to see a lot of Le'Veon Bell for yeah. the next uh, 10 minutes or so of this game. I, I think the Steelers, they don't want to risk the turnover, risk the pick six. Because, you know, it, if you want to talk about a momentum killer, it's a pick six when you're up right this big in the Super Bowl. Get I would like to see the line of eye form go straight down the throat. I don't like this this shotgun run right here, though. That, you know, that's what Bell's been doing all season long, all game long, pounding it down the defense's throat. I don't know why you would, why you would separate from that at all at this point. Looks like Ben's going to go ahead and throw the ball in this play, too. Because he, he does get Brian over the middle, but he's not able to hold on to the ball. So that's going to not only be incomplete, but you know, I know we're still early on, but it's still stopping the clock. You know, very, very valuable seconds that could come into play later on. Yeah, you do not want to give the number one team offense back the ball at all here. We, we haven't seen Bell run back-to-back -back runs since the very first drive of the game, which is probably their most productive drive until that pick six you know i'd really like to see him hand the ball a couple times now you're looking at third and 11 clock is stopped you're going to give it back to to detroit with a lot of time if you can't get things going here we'll see what the steelers go ahead and call here with the four wide set this is going to be a draw up the middle safe play the bell able to get a, a decent gain there so that's going to result in a punt here for the steelers yeah, and he was looking. He was looking for the run. He wanted to shave some time off. I did not like that second down play. I think that they should play the clock. They're up 21 points. Yeah, you know, if he was able to call a play like that on second down, he would have had a very manageable third down rather than a third and long. And he does not call a fair catch. That's pretty surprising. Uh, still unable to, to capitalize on that and, and force a fumble at all. But uh, now the Lions come back out. I, I want to see them move quickly, but I want to see them stick with Abdul and make, continue making the Steelers try to get up in the box. If I'm Pittsburgh here, I think I'm going to call over the top coverage, make them beat me underneath. Uh, you know, time's still your friend. Three scores is a lot of time. You know, just just don't take too many risks. Make them beat you underneath. Let's so see. Let's see the handoff here to Abdullah started off. Oh, wow, that was a huge tackle. Honestly, I think he could have taken that to the house if, if he didn't get that shoe strength tackle there because he had some room and then some on the outside there. And it worked. It's now second down and seven after the three-yard rush. The Steelers lined up in the nickel. So let's see, see what Stafford calls up here, second and seven. He's going to throw it out to the left side to Tate. Another big tackle. He and here we go. Go ahead and hurry up. Yards. I definitely think the Lions are starting to, to look at the clock down. They're going to need to get some points on the board. They're starting to feel the time here. Let's see what they go ahead and change this play to. Oh, almost oh, a, a big nice play there by the Steelers, but Turns it was going to take that for a big gain. And, it, you know, smart play by a young, by a young running back there, able to get out of bounds, not try to break any extra tackles, because time is really crucial at this point in the game. How about that stat line, though, guys? 8 for 16, 1 TD, 3 interceptions, 156 yards. I did not expect this from the MVP, Matt Stafford. No, and there we go. Quick pass to Ebron. This is the kind of Lions offense we have been expecting to see all game. It's a shame that it's just now popping out in the third, you know, winning minutes here in the third quarter. Yeah, I think, you know, like we talked about a little bit, the underneath stuff's going to be available here as the, the Steelers are, are okay with giving that up. 
Um, I think the Lions have to take advantage of it, hope for a missed or broken tackle, and, and get a big play that way rather than pushing downfield because downfield has not been successful in this game. Can't say that it has been. So let's see what Stafford goes head across here. Single back, three wide cells. He's got four in the slot. Throws a quick out to Tate, able to tap his feet inbounds and get out. Nice play on first down there by Stafford. Huge gain there. Are we, are we at four down territory, guys? Do you think if, if, if it's not a TD, is it a bust? I, um, you know, I think you're okay still. Um, there's a lot of game left to be played, but but I, I don't know if you're at four down territory just yet. You know, I it, it's going to be a tough call. I think, I think the right answer for that question is, is it really depends what the fourth down is. If you have something fourth and short, Go ahead and take it. If you're sitting at a fourth and four, fourth and five or longer, they, they might as well pick the field goal. So Stafford goes ahead, throws it short. Abdullah comes back and gets it though, and gets another shoestring tackle there by uh, Shazier. I, I think it'd be a good time here for Abdullah to get another run. The the Steelers are definitely playing pass all the way here. Yeah, and you know if, if he's able to set the lines up with a third and short. If they don't get the third and short, this is a situation where I said you would go for a fourth down if you go ahead and have a fourth and short. Then the double Take. coverage. Oh. Almost comes down with the Calvin. You know what? I, I ain't going to blame on that kind of play call. It's a, it's something you want to do with your number one wide receiver. You have the best guy in the game right now. So, you know, give him a shot. Let him come down with the play in the Super Bowl. He's been making those plays his whole career. I can't, yes. I can't, I can't knock it for trying. So at this point for the Lions, if, uh, you know, I, I would be okay with them going near the first down, haven't tried to get a guy to run for the first down, and then going for it on fourth. I think they're they're in about that territory if they get close. Ooh, tight oh, tight throw there. To that Calvin was a tight Johnson. throw, but Calvin's able to bring it down. And here we go, calling the hurry up here. See if, uh, I think this might be a prime spot for the Lions to go ahead and get a quick pass for a touchdown. Calvin in the slot, watch for him. Oh, they, they go, go ahead and give it to Abdullah anyway. Spins inside. He's not able to pick up too much, but a, a, a two-yard gain here. The, and now, now at this point, I think this is fourth down, ter four down territory. You can't, Definitely. you cannot settle for a field goal inside the five. Breaking huddle at the four. Defense come to the lines. Got two wide sets to the left. Tate's the guy in the slot. Ebron on the right side. Looks like he's got Riddick in there in the backfield. Sequiz goes to up the middle to right, right. Beautiful play right there. Just what the Lions needed. Now they need a big, much needed all game, but they need, stop. especially now, defensive stop. Absolutely, turnover stop. They have to get the ball back before the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, I, was, I was just gonna say, if they get the ball the back before the fourth quarter, we have a game still. Right, a lot of time left in this game. It's not a good time here for the Steelers to get conservative. I would like to see them still maybe run on first down. Even maybe a drag route or something short just to get some yards, keep the clock rolling. But, you know, you don't want to get too conservative here. There is a lot of time left for this offense to get back in this game. Yeah, they need to stick to the gameplay. They came out in the, in the, in the first half and uh, stick with what was working, drive down the field. Ben Roethlisberger is definitely looking to uh, to secure some more points. And let's see what kind of formation they come out here. It looks like it's going to be a shotgun formation, which, as we've talked about a little bit, we've seen a lot of shotgun here. We'd like to see a little bit more power running game. Yeah, it's something that the Steelers have really been trying to stick with is the shotgun. And as you said, I'm not quite sure why. When he someone... baited there that whole time. He was wow. waiting for that. That is not and what that's you exactly want to have what Bomber needed. Eric Weddle, veteran player, snuck up, yeah. looked to run defense, and just went right back. You know Beautiful what? Design. If, if Bomber can score a touchdown here. A minute 43 in the 30. Plenty of time. Score a touchdown. You go in the fourth quarter with a one score game where you were just down by three at the half. Absolutely. You, you got Antonio Brown and one-on-one -on -one coverage on the sideline. He's got his guy beat. Antonio Brown has been a non-factor in this game up to this point. Let's see. Uh, Steelers, if they got two guys in the middle of the box, play fake there. Stafford's rolling out to the right side. And there's a spade of Shazier. I think he might have just took Stafford out. I think he did as well. But you know what? If Stafford goes out in that play, at least he knows he made a smart play. Then throw it across his body downfield again. So let's go see what if uh, if Stafford's been this game now. 
You know, moral That's victories don't though. win Super Bowls, and while it was a great play, he should have gotten rid of it earlier. He held onto the uh, ball too long, and he could have just and cost look his, at the uh, pick right there, folks. Ooh. And Huge that's why play, the backup Stafford quarterback that comes game. in. That might be the the, the the lack of having Stafford. Yeah, you know, I I think I think he knew it was coming all along. Uh, you get a backup quarterback in there, and there ain't no way this guy's taking a shot downfield in the first play. And here we're going to see the I form that we've been talking about run down the field, shake yeah. the clock off. Let's After go down to the fourth quarter. Let, let's go ahead and see if uh, if he smartens up and runs down the field. And Bell's not able to get anywhere on that one. Lions knew it was coming. Even with the high scoring game, guys, how how about the defense for both these teams? It's it's surprising. It's not what we thought. Like I said, the, the Lions defense is very middle of the road. Steelers have been a little bit better, but neither of those are anything really to write home about. But they have, you know, been the story of this of this game so far. You know, I, I don't know if the story's been the defense or the question or the decision making of these quarterbacks. Some of these throws have just been kind of head scratching at times. Yeah, we're definitely seeing pass happy right now in the Super Bowl. Yep. And here we go. We just got the sideline reporter coming from Matthew Stafford's injury. Looks like a bruised. He should come back. Let's see if he's able to tough it out and get back in this game. It's the freaking Super Bowl. You got to get your pussy ass back in there and help your team win this game. It, 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 you're down and, and you got to lead your team to victory at this point. This is ridiculous. Can't say I would have used the same the same wording, but I 100% agree with the point made there. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, unless you ca cannot bring your legs to walk to the field, you need to be on there at this point. So let's see what Bank calls here. Third and eleven, and he's going to get sacked here. And that's Hayes again. Three sacks for Hayes on the game. I think the Steelers are happy to, to, to watch the clock tick down in the fourth quarter right here. So we're going to start the fourth quarter with Pittsburgh up 35-21 on the Detroit Lions here in the Super Bowl for uh, NBL Season 14. Welcome back, friends, as the fourth quarter is about to begin. So at this point, uh, you know, w w the question mark really that's kind of entering is Stafford going to be on this drive for the Lions? They're going to be really behind the eight ball if he's not out there. I don't know if they're going to have the faith in their backup quarterback to be able to drive down the field and score at least two touchdowns to put them back in this game. Yeah, I think he's being checked out for a concussion protocol right now. They're going to try and get him back in. I'll be really surprised if he does not come back this drive. He is much needed for this team to come back from the 14-point deficit. So we talked about the beginning of the game, I believe. One person on this telecast crew had, had picked the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Um, it may have not been as, as pretty as, as I predicted as far as Le'Veon Bell running this game, but uh, I, this Pittsburgh team is an explosive offense in itself. Ben Roethlisberger did set the NBL record this year for touchdown passes at 40. Uh, you know, this, this could away. be Ben Roethlisberger's last hurrah. He may ride off into the sunset after this game. So this is a big quarter here for Ben Roethlisberger and this Pittsburgh Steelers team. Yeah, you know, and I have to say, too, uh, if other than the Lions, I think that the Steelers were the most picked and most liked team from the get-go of the season to go into the Super Bowl. I think a lot of teams had them riding off this year with, as you said, Ben riding off into the sunset, possibly being his last year. He's coming close to the end, so let's see if it really was destiny and fate to have the Steelers go ahead and win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't think I don't think is going to retire. I know a lot of people are talking about it, but from from what I've heard, he is still throwing a really nice ball. I'd be surprised to see him ride off this season, but he's having a great year. So let's see. We do have Stafford back out there. Goes and hands it off to Abdul on the very first play. It'll take up a solid three-yard gain here. And you know, I, I don't mind this play calling because they really do have plenty of time to get two scores if their defense can make a stop. Staff is going to come out again. Another single back, four wide sets. So let's see what he goes and calls here. Takes a snap. That was a dangerous pass. Stafford is just not seeing the field right now. 
I think Stafford possibly might have been waiting for his guy to make a cut there, and he and he was just being pushed so far back that he he never made the cut. I think he, I think I think he's underestimating these Steelers corners. They are they are running a fantastic defense on these wide receivers, and the timing routes are just not there. So third and seven, Stafford again will come out single back, four wide, third time in a row. See what he does here. Huge sack right there, right up the middle from Hayward. I really love Hayward. Hayward two sacks. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this is not a spot, although they're down big, I would not go for it here. No, there's still, still a lot plenty of time. Of time. Yeah. And here they are. They're going to punt. Fair catch this time. See, Jerry Archer has some speed. You'll see. Oh, I'm not sure why he the called Steelers a fair catch there. He has some room to run. I understand not wanting to risk risk the fumble, but you do. You Archer's got a history yards. of fumbling. I I can see that play. I think if you're Steelers, though, you can't get too conservative here at this point. Yeah, the goal right here, guys. They can shave a lot of time off. They get a good drive going. Yeah, it, you know, as the Steelers right now, I think the goal, if they're not going to keep converting first downs and get a touchdown somehow, I think the goal is to get the ball back to the Lions with under three minutes left because then the Lions are really going to have to work for those two scores. And let's watch the timeouts. They're, they're definitely going to have to be smart and not use timeouts from the Detroit Lions. How about that stat, though, guys? Under 300 yards for both teams on the offensive side. It's, it's really been a defensive game. Draw play to Bell up the middle, and he's able to get close to the first down. Looks like he's going to have about one yard to go on a very close third down. If the Lions are able to stop this, it's going to be huge for them. Third down now. Yeah, so if you're Bell, they know you're running, you know you're running, you put a hat on a hat, you run right up the middle and you get this first down convert. I'm really surprised not to see the Lions more stacked in the box here on this play. He really had a huge, oh is that going to come back and hold him though? The defense accepts the penalty. That, that's huge. I, I, you couldn't have, couldn't have had a worse time for a holding call than that. Yeah, that's a bit of a backbreaker there for the Steelers. I, I, I think you still don't get too crazy here. You look for something maybe underneath. If it's not there, you just go ahead and throw it away. Um, worst thing you can do here is try to force it downfield here and, and turn it over in your own territory. Yeah, I, I, I'm on the side where you, where you run right here. You take the 45 seconds off the clock and you make the Lions and Stafford, who's having a bad, bad reading on his passing game, try to score the Lions might be pressing up, and the Steelers do go ahead and run there to the outside. Bell's able to pick up about two yards there. So it is going to bring us a fourth down. And, uh, you know, if, if the Steelers let the clock tick down uh, to about 330, probably if they run it down all the way. Yeah, if they run it down. They so don't go. run it down, though. No, it looks like they're going ahead and, and punt it. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, at this point, time is really valuable. Yeah, I'm really surprised. I think that was a mistake on the special teams right there. So now, if the Lions are able to, uh, you know, score a touchdown with any time above the two minute warning, I think if they if they get below that point, they're having an extremely slow drive. They score any time above the two minute warning. It's going to be a one score game. They're going to have, considering and uh, you know, including they don't have having call timeouts. They'll have three timeouts plus the two minute warning. So they still have time in this game. And Stafford is coming out five wide here on the first play. So we'll see where he's going to look for this one. And that's what they and needed right there with the yep, Ebron. Wide open up the middle. If they can get a touchdown in the, in the next 30 seconds, they won't have to even uh, they're not gonna worry about do any kind of onside kicking. Not at all. I don't I don't think they're going to have to worry about onside kick at all. Not. Uh, regardless, you know, with the two-minute warning and the three timeouts, I don't think it's it's an option in their mind right now. No, they're going to score right here. They want to get a touchdown before three minutes. No, they again, want, five they want to score and they want to score quick. Yep, five wide again. Let's see what they go here. I wouldn't be surprised to see it, uh, uh, some kind of play from the Tim right here. Oh, dangerous throw oh, again. That was dangerous. I, I'm not sure what is in stack with mine. Maybe, you know, the possibility of having his third Super Bowl in NBL here is, is you know, getting pressure to him. But he's, he's got to stop making these these bonehead plays, you know, in the red zone. The stack formation's interesting. Look for an outbreaking route here by the Lions. So what they go ahead and call us a Steelers. Possibly might have seen that as well. So they are all one spreading their guys out wide, possibly leaving the middle of the field to open now. 
Oh, did he that's... get that off the double wow. deflection? Wow. That is why you have Calvin Johnson on the team. He makes plays like that. Of this that's going to come back to haunt the Steelers. And, and, uh, you know, I have to say, undoubtedly, if the Lions come back and tie this, that is the play of the game, unquestionably. The, the, the I hope the film crew for this Super Bowl recorded that play. I'm not sure how they dropped that. Uh, that. That was two defenders touched it, and Calvin Johnson got it. Two string, two but, string. But, but no matter what, it's a touchdown, and the Lions have to be happy from the result. I agree. So let's see what Dre Arthur does here. Don't want to have a fumble on this kickoff. Able to take it out just to the 20 yard line. And so, I think they're going to have to see the Steelers move the ball up. And uh, if they don't get a score, at least put them into their side of the field. Yeah, and you know, I also do want to say this is exactly what I was talking about with this three score lead. The Steelers got very comfortable in the second half. They did not ever at any point come out and start taking any shots. And now their offense is just so out of rhythm. So it's, we got to see if they can pick it back up here. It's good to see Antonio Brown get involved. He's been a little quiet this game. That's who I'd be looking for right now if I need big plays. Go to Antonio Brown. Let him get the ball in space. It's as good as a run. Give him the ball out on the flat. And let's see what happens. It's taken him about three and a half quarters, but he is a, a picked up. I think that was the second big play of the game here, or second catch of the game here. Here we go. Five wide. Both these guys are, are, are no chance of even running this ball. See what Ben calls here. Big sack. Oh, wow. Is that Hayes wow. again? Nope. No, no, that's I, gonna be Fletcher. I think, I think I think that might have been a split sack between Hayes and Fletcher. And there we go. Boy, Detroit just Lions burned the right. first time the out. They need to get help. They're trying to get the ball back. They're trying to use the two-minute warning as their third timeout. They just took one there. I really wouldn't be left surprised in the to see a draw play or a screen play here from the uh, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, if if they throw the ball into coverage, they get it picked off. I mean, you can almost write this game up as going into overtime. Yeah, I think if I'm the Steelers, I take a chance here, push it downfield. Um, conservative hasn't worked for him this game. Take a shot. And looks like it is going to be hand off the bell, and he has a wide open hole up there. That is a beautiful play call. And this is going to be, uh, it's it's not the game, but it's almost the game. If and the think, Lions don't get this, they're really going to be hurting for time. And there was a second timeout. They have one left. They definitely trust Stafford with the two-minute drill. They're hoping to get the ball back before the two-minute quarter. They want to put the ball in their MVP's hands. So let's see what Ben has here. Looks like Antonio Brown in the slot. Huge, huge first down right that, there. That was huge. So as, as I said, the, um, looks like the, the Steelers should let the, let the take down to the two-minute warning here. Um, the, the Lions do have a chance to get the ball back. It's only going to be with, with like 30 seconds left. But if the Steelers convert a first down at all, this game is is basically over. I'd be really surprised to see the Steelers call play here. I mean, it would just it, it, it doesn't make any sense why they just called that play. They could have let the let it tick down to the two minute warning. Now they just put themselves on second down instead of instead of having a first down with two minute warning. Absolutely, they they just lost probably 40 seconds right there. Very, very bad mistake with Fox. Easily 40 seconds. I think that that gives it, if they don't get a first down, that gives the Lions a chance to get the ball back with a full minute left. Are they passing here? Yeah, it's a play action play. Let's see where it goes. Wow. Oh, he's taking the shot. Well, what, right there. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless right there. I do not Big understand. Big Ben could have taken off for 10 yards there and, and kept the clock moving. Instead, they throw a heave into coverage. You know, play calling may come back to bite the Steelers because that really hasn't made sense the last two plays. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if you think about it, if they were going to call a pass play, that was the play to do it. There was, I think, two or three up on the clock, so no matter if they ran it or, or what, the clock was stopping at two, because of the two-minute warning no matter what. Well, but there, Stafford's going to get the ball back. Stafford has a chance. Let's see if he's able to show us why he won MVP over Big Ben Roethlisberger this year. I just do not understand this special teams coach and clock management coach right now. Can somebody please help me out? Why did he kick the ball with 32 seconds left on the clock? No timeouts for Detroit. I the clock management is is next level unbelievable. There, I don't even I can't even fathom what is going on in the in the mind of the Pittsburgh Steelers coaches right now. And Stafford's going to come out pistol three wide set on the very first play. 
Tate has the reception. There's a sideline. This to Tate. tackle. Wow. That's a that's a huge big gain on the on the first down. Now on first down, every snap crucial. The rest of and the confidence right there. They didn't go hurry up. They have they, they, they're comfortable with the clock right now. They think that they can move down the field and score right here. And we're gonna have a bunch formation. See where Stafford goes. He is scrolling out. To, he has someone open. He did keep him in bounds though. That was good tackling right there. That, that was a nice tackle. And Lions elect to not go with the hurry up. They're gonna probably try to get the play call into the huddle real quick. Get to the line. This is the worst thing that could happen to the offense. See another bunch formation. Let's see where Stafford's gonna go. Scrambles out to the side again. There's a yeah, shot that, there to Abdul. Abdul doesn't get out of bounds though. That's a big play there yeah, by the and, defense. And now we're gonna see the hurry here's up. The hurry up. You see what Stafford goes here. I think you definitely want to look towards the sideline pass here. It looks like on the left side they're giving him no. Johnson guys. working out. Stafford sees the field in front of him. He's gonna run. Oh, dangerous! Not sliding there. Yeah, he needs to clock the ball right left. now. He needs to clock it. Don't call a play. I know he's calling the play. This I don't understand what he's doing. This is a prime clocking spot. Watch for Calvin. Down the middle of the field. Ooh. Oh, spotted down. All right, you know what? This is gonna. I still think the Lions should have clocked the ball there. That would have that would have given them the time to get into the huddle, see a full play call screen rather than seeing it now with about eight or nine less seconds. If you're the Steelers, back up, play the, play the outside. Play the clock. They have to go all the way down to spike it. 13 seconds left. You probably have two passes here, guys. Let's see what Stafford does here. We got four wide. Takes a snap. Looking downfield. He's going to chunk it deep into the middle. Oh, almost picked off. Oh, three guys really had a chance of making an interception on that one. So it looks like we're going to have six seconds left. Um, I think the Steelers need to call a timeout right here and get some uh, fresh legs in the field. Yeah, you know the Lions. Uh, theoretically, they they do have a chance. They do have an opportunity to call a quick, you know, ten yard out because the Steelers are probably going to back off the line and give themselves only about a 25 yard pass into the end zone. However, I don't think it's something they're going to want to risk at this point. They're probably just taking a shot into the end zone. And this basically is Super Bowl. I'll see if Calvin's able to come down with another one. I'm sure that's who he's going to throw it to. It's game over though. Two oh, yards wow. don't have the time. Wow. On the two. That what is, a game. What an end that was. Congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lips team wins a Super Bowl. Yes, we do have to congratulate Lip for picking up his first Super Bowl here in NBL. It was a hard-fought game. It almost let the, the Lions come back. They were able to. Uh, let's see if Big Ben decides he wants to ride off into the sunset. Uh, one final thing before we go, as we always do, we're going to go ahead and announce our NBL Live Player of the Game. And I do believe for the first time we're not going to give it to an offensive player and a quarterback. We're going to go ahead and give it to, on the defense, Ryan Chazier. He, he has played phenomenally this game came up with with two interceptions and he really held down the middle of that field for this uh, Steelers defense and it's ultimately one in the game. So thank you guys for tuning in to our NBL Super Bowl here and it was a great game and we'll see you guys all back here next year for as we continue our play-by-plays. Take care folks.